All right, so you've picked out all your modules and you're ready to start making some music. Well, first things first, you've gotta have the right tools for the right job. So before you plug in anything, follow these simple steps for arranging your Eurorack and staying safe in the process. As the saying goes, safety first. So you need to make sure you take the proper precautions before plugging in your modules. Some suggest making sure your case and power supply are in the off position before installing your modules, but I suggest you completely remove the IEC cable or whichever power cable is attaching your module to the power source. This will ensure your safety and the safety of your investment without a doubt. Now it's time to install your modules. During the module selection process, you'll probably have picked up many different modules with many different power supply connectors. Some might have 16 pin connectors and some might have 10 pin connectors. You'll wanna make sure that you attach the corresponding pins on each end of the Eurorack connector cable. Usually you'll see a red strip or dot on your unit indicating the minus 12V pins. You need to make sure that this minus 12V pin on your power supply and the minus 12V pin on your module is connected. Usually the cable has a red line along one of the sides, which is easier to match up. Regardless, make sure that when you're installing your cable to your module that you press firmly. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, you can plug back in the power cable and power on your case and modules. The arrangement of your modules is entirely up to you. My preference is usually to organize from left to right, left being the sound sources and modules that create the sound through the modifiers and shapers, and lastly, the effects. Obviously, this will all be determined by the size of each module you select, and of course, the size of your case. With that out of the way, let's take a look back at the VCV rack and how we created a patch earlier. Remember the building blocks of a synth and take those same steps to set up a patch in your system. In this example, I'm gonna use a few Lifeforms and Erica synth modules to demonstrate this. Firstly, let's lay out the modules that we're gonna be using. For our sound source, we're gonna use the Erica Synth Black Wavetable VCO module for our oscillator. For our sound shapers, we're gonna use the ADSR envelope portion of the Pittsburgh Module Lifeforms SE1 and the Erica Synth Black Dual VCF for its filter. For the utilities portion, we're gonna use a mixer section from the SV1 and the Pittsburgh Module System Interface to collect our sounds for listening back. Lastly, we'll make use of the Make Noise Pressure Points module to trigger the envelope of the SV1. So let's get started. First, we're gonna use the pink cable and take the sound source output, which is a simple sawtooth waveform from the black wavetable VCO and patch it into the mixer section of the SV1. This will allow us to change the volume level of the oscillator to taste. Next, we're gonna take the red cable from the Mix 1 plus 2 output on the SV1 mixer and plug straight into the amplifier portion of the SV1 to bypass the filter section. Then take the green cable and go directly into the channel 1 filter input of the Black Dual VCF. Now we're gonna take the yellow cable and take the low pass output from the dual black VCF and plug it into the channel one input of the system interface so we'll eventually be able to hear our sound. As we did in VCV rack, we're gonna use an envelope to shape our sound. So we're going to use the make noise pressure points module to trigger the ADSR on the SV1. So I'll use the blue cable to connect the channel one outputs of the pressure points module and plug into the input trigger of the SV1's envelope. Next, for a little spice, if you unplug the red cable between the SV1's mixer and amplifier, you're able to have the envelope affect both the filter and the dynamics simultaneously. So let's listen to that. So that's just an example of a simple patch. Obviously, you're going to explore a lot more using LFOs to modulate your sound sources and incorporate different effects modules to create your own elaborate patches, but I think that gives you a good overview of what it takes to get started. Well guys, that wraps it up. I truly hope this series helps many of you who are on the fence about starting your very first Eurorack synthesizer to get the courage to take the plunge. My journey to understanding the vast world of Eurorack sound creation has been a long and fulfilling one. I spent a tremendous amount of time producing this series and had a lot of fun. 
I've met so many great people along the way, and I'd like to give a huge shout out to Perry at Pittsburgh Modular and Christiana at Erica Since. These two people and their companies have been invaluable in helping make this series possible, and I am forever grateful. As always, remember to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.